Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today is a Stashing with Stephanie Day where we bring you a brand new fat quarter friendly pattern that's been inspired by this month's collection that we sent out to our Stashing with Stephanie subscribers. We're gonna tell you a little bit about that program in just a minute, but if you're not a member, don't worry, you can get this quilt. We do have kits available. We have a lot more fabric than we normally do this month because you guys have been buying it all up within like a couple of days. So we are able to get some more this month we'll see how it goes if you guys eat it all up again then we'll continue to get more in future months if not then we're gonna dial it back a little bit so get the goodies see how it goes I hope you guys really enjoy it and this month's collection is grow by Pippa Shaw I really love Pippa Shaw I've done a couple of quilts using her collections she really is inspired by floral she's a gardener too and so this one definitely has some vegetables garden themes to it so if you were someone who picked that up over the last uh, year and a half or you uh, have always done it I think you're going to enjoy this collection and even if you don't um, vegetables were like a super hot thing like about a decade ago and I admit I bought some of them too but in hindsight I'm like these are really ugly vegetables and I never did make or keep anything that I made with it but this is going to be a modern vegetable and the way that we're using it in the quilt you're going to see more color than you will print and so it will be used not too small to where it's too intimidating but smaller so that way you're more seeing the color of this flower design that we're going to be creating with the different uh, colors in here so feel free to mix it up uh, with your own stash but if you want if you really like the way our quilt kit turned out you can get that while supplies last over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com let's take a peek at the fabric and then we'll get in on the tutorial so these are supposed to be onion seeds they're probably gonna be hard to pick up on camera but it's just tiny little dots and onion seeds are actually tiny little dots and we always like to supplement with a few of the basics the figo basics that they have um, so that's what the this one is and it just fills out the colorway a little bit more it's always good to have basics in your stash for that reason this one are the grown-up onions so and some turnips and a lot of those ground bits but that's fun it's just two color design so it works really well and works with our theme of looking more color than uh, what's going on on the fabric we got more onion seeds just a little orange there And these just look like little bubbles. This is another one of the basics. It's just a nice little swirl. It just serves to add some color and fill in. It's more of like an orangey, burnt orange. And we have this nice lighter orange here. And then we have multicolor onion seeds. You can really see it. this one has multiple colors from different areas of the collection. And this one we gotta look at big. This one is going to be your produce. So this is where I was telling you about modern vegetables. We got them here. It's still the carrots. We got some peas, some squash. Actually, that looks like a white eggplant. Um, but these are definitely uh, speak modern to me. They are not like the old fashioned vegetables that were so popular. So if you really got into those, I think you're really gonna love these because there's lots of fun things you can do for your kitchen with them. Uh, but we are gonna use them as one of the light greens in this month's collection. I don't know about you guys, my basement is currently filled with canning. I got super into it. I bought a water path canner and a pressure canner. So we have all the things canned and it's really nice. We can just go grab something for dinner. But this one's really fun. It's just all the colorful things that you might can up and they're all in there and ready to be eaten from the harvest. This one we're also gonna use as one of our lighter greens. This is a basic from their Lucky Charm. It's just a little acorn. I thought the color fit and as well as the print as well, since we're talking about grow. We got more onions. 
this time in that green colorway. This was the other vegetable one that I think is modern vegetable. It's a bunch of different peppers and I grew like a whole pepper plant from seed. I was so proud of myself. It looked so good and we made some really good salsa from that. It was very yummy. Although I learned that when you boil up peppers to get the skins off of them, it makes it a little bit more potent and I was not prepared for that. That was, that was a little much. And of course, any good gardener needs some tools. So we'll open this up. You got all the different tools that you need and some pails and you got some twine, all the things that you need. And again, we're using this smaller. So if you're not super into gardening, don't worry. It's a color that's going to be popping out at you more than the gardening tools. And then we have that bubble again, this time in kind of a really deep teal. So that's it. This is our collection for the month. It's Grow by Pippa Shaw for Figo Fabrics. Figo is a modern arm of Northcott Fabrics, which is more well known. And it's grow interspersed with about three of their basics to help fill out that color. Because like I said, we're going to be breaking it down with color. Normally I don't get really specific with you guys. I'm just like light, medium, dark. But for this one, we're talking about dark greens, dark, medium greens, light greens. We're talking about some dark pinks and oranges and some light oranges and the way we use them in the block is going to help create that flower design and have it be really fun and beautiful and if you can see the fabric is behind me that's what you're going to see you're going to see the different colors in this floral that we're going to put together to create our flower patch all right let's get started on that tutorial and learn how to make this really fun block all right, so we're gonna start off by creating our stem block. And the first thing you wanna do is go get your pattern for this. It comes and it tells you exactly what cutting instructions you need, how many of everything you need for the different sizes. And if you're a member of Session with Stephanie, you can get that for free as long as you're logged into your account. Um, if you would like to join Session with Stephanie, join first and then you can get access to that and all of our other Session with Stephanie patterns for free right away as soon as you are signed up and paid. But you'll wanna do that and check out before you add the subscription to your uh, cart or before you add the pattern to your cart because otherwise it won't know and you'll have to pay. So that was super rambly. Basically, if you wanna join and get the free pattern, join first, then check out second with the pattern. Anyway, so we're gonna create a stem block and we are starting with one of our light green squares. I'm using one of the ones that has a canyon on it. And then I've got two of my smaller background squares and I need to draw a line from point to point in it. If you followed along with our uh, triangle series, this will be familiar to you. What I'm doing is I'm lining up the edge of my ruler with the tips here and then I'm just marking down the side and I'm making sure that my pen is angled in toward that ruler because I want it to be right down the center of this line. So I've got that one marked. Now we're gonna do this one. And I really love these friction gel pens. They go away with heat, which is nice. Um, it doesn't matter so much for what we're doing here because we're going to uh, be cutting uh, off and this will be behind, but it's all so good to have that go away eventually. All right, so we're gonna do this one side at a time here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put this in the corner and I'm going to go ahead and stitch just right on top of that line. If you have followed along with our triangle series, if you've done any sort of triangle with us, then you're probably used to stitching a scant quarter inch seam away from it. But for this type of block, you wanna stitch actually right on top of that line from point to point so that way we can stitch and flip and we will have this as our final result for this particular type of block. But because it overlaps, we wanna do one side at a time, otherwise we're gonna be stitching down this corner and that's no good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch down that side. If you want, you certainly can pin this in place, but since it's such a small area, I just normally lay it in place and then stitch right down that line. Now I highly recommend that you chain piece and do all of your stems at one time. It's gonna save you a lot of time because you can do all these steps all at once and make it really efficient. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna place it so that quarter inch mark is right on top of that line that we drew and then stitch right down on. And we're gonna trim this triangle and that's gonna create our quarter inch seam. So that way it's coming off to the side. 
You can save this bonus triangle and do something else fun with it and give it to a friend who enjoys little scraps like this or you can just toss it, which is what I'm gonna do here. All right, so now we're gonna take, and we're just gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna go ahead and press that seam open. I really love to press my seams open. It keeps your blocks more true to size because when you press it over, it eats up just a little bit of fabric and makes it just a tad bit smaller. So if you're having trouble getting things to fit, that could be why. So I just like to press it from both sides, and you just wanna make sure that when you're looking at it from this side, you have a nice straight seam. If there's a wiggle in there anywhere, then you've got a pleat on the other side that you're gonna need to deal with. All right, so we've got one side done. Now we need to add our other to the other side. And it's just the same thing. We're just gonna stitch right down that line and then we're gonna trim and press open and our stem is done. It's super fast and super easy. Right, that's it we have got our stems done we're going to use our lighter green fabrics for that now if you got the kit from us or you ordered a finishing kit to make your stash with stephanie bundle enough fabric to have make this quilt um, you're going to have four light green fabrics that you can use for this i used all four and then just had some extra fabric to go in my stash because i like the extra variety that it gave but you only would need if you're making the lap size well, you would just need two of them. So you could just save two fat quarters for something else too. Now we're gonna make all of our half square triangles that are gonna make up the petals and the leaves of our flower block. Now you wanna be really careful because you're cutting the darker green and the darker pink and orange to a different size than your lighter green and your lighter pink and orange. Those are not gonna be turned into half square triangles so they don't need to be as big because we're gonna lose a little bit when we make that process of turning these into half square triangles. So make sure you are using the correct size and that is listed in your pattern instructions so just pay attention and you'll be just fine all right I'm gonna go ahead and make all mine up here but I'm gonna show you on one here so what you're gonna do same deal we're going to start by marking on the wrong side of our background fabric a line from point to point And if you took our Triangle Masterclass, we have an entire video on sewing half square triangles. It's very in depth. It talks about your scant corner seam, what it is, why you wanna use it. But basically what we're gonna do is we're going to lay these right sides together with our print squares. And we're gonna sew a scant corner inch seam down both sides of this drawn line. And that's going to give us two half square triangles for the price of one. And the reason why I really love doing this is one, it's a lot more accurate because this is a bias seam, it's stretchy. So if I were to cut this apart first and then sew it, it's a lot easier to get that bias accidentally stretched out and then your pieces don't turn out quite the right size. Sometimes you get smiley and frowny faces because it's just not a straight seam. And then the other thing is it really is just a lot easier to get them to turn out with the points where we want them to be, which is what we all want in our quilts. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark the rest of these and I'm gonna chain piece these all together. All right, so I'm turning my sewing machine to sew a quarter inch stitch, and then I'm moving the needle one needle width to the right. So that'll be a scant quarter inch seam on my sewing machine. Again, if you need help with that, check out our class, our Triangle Master class. We have a lesson specifically on half square triangles. All right, so I'm just arranging these right sides together. And if you want a pin, you can, but I'm just arranging it so that way the edge of my presser foot is even with that line that I drew. And I just like to line up my points once I get going here. And then I'll just sew all the way down. And I just keep my finger right to the side of that. That way I'm maintaining that scan quarter and seam all the way down. That I see people have issues with that when I'm ever I'm teaching with people in person. They like to just kind of let it go at the end and then it doesn't always stay straight. All right, then if you're chain piecing, you can just keep right on doing that. And we're gonna sew all the way down one side, then we're gonna flip it around and sew all the way down the other. All 
right, so I've gotten to the end of all my chain piecing. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up my presser foot, pull everything around to the side so we can just sit right there as I'm going. And then I'd like to lift my needle up and I'm gonna arrange it now so that I'm sewing down the other side. The edge of my presser foot is still even with that line that I drew. That way we're gonna have a little bit less than a half an inch in between the stitches and we'll be able to cut those apart to reveal our half square triangles. When I come to the end of one, I do sew right off of it, and then I usually lift my presser foot up a little bit and then line it back up. That way I know I'm in line for the next one. When you reach the end, you just wanna clip all these apart. I like to just sometimes use the thread cutter on the side of my sewing machine. It works fabulously. I do this whenever I am sewing any type of half square triangle. It makes everything go a lot faster. And sometimes you have a patterns that have quite a few of them. And anytime you can speed up the quilting and get to the finished product faster, that's my favorite part. So I'm gonna do it. All right, it is quality check time. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to line up the edge of my ruler with that seam. And I wanna make sure that I'm either right at half an inch or a little less. Ideally, you wanna be somewhere in between three eighths of an inch and a half inch where your seam is, because then that means you've sewn a scant quarter inch seam and you're gonna have no problems going forward as long as you have lined up your corners correctly and you've cut everything to the right size to start with. All right, I'm gonna go ahead now and line up the edge of the ruler on the line that we drew. Now it isn't super important that you are exactly on the line when you cut this apart because we already have the accuracy from when we sewed. However, you don't want your seam to be too skinny because it could pop open just with use or even just putting it on the long arm when it gets a little tight there. All right, so now you can see we've got two half square triangles and we're ready to press those open. But first I'm gonna trim open the rest of mine. All right, it's time to give all of these a press. And just like before, I really like to press these seams open. It makes for great joins when you're done. Plus the blocks stay more true to size. So I just start by opening up that seam allowance with my fingertips and then putting the nose of the iron straight down that seam allowance as I go across. And then you wanna make sure that it's nice and straight, no wiggles anywhere. And then I like to do the same from the other side. It gets it super, super flat. All right, so that's how you press that seam open. Now I gotta do it with all the rest of mine. All right, so now we're ready to trim our half square triangles down. It's really easy to skip this step because I know it can take a little bit of time, but the results in your finished block are gonna be so worth it in the end. All right, so the most important line that we're gonna line up is gonna be this 45 degree line on your ruler. That's gonna be lined up with your center seam. And the reason why you want it there is let's say we have it off like this. That means that point isn't gonna go right to the corner of your block and it's gonna be really hard to match things up later if you can do it at all. So that's the most important one. We wanna make sure that that is right on that seam. Now for the next part, I'm gonna stand for the rest of this because I find it easier to see what I'm doing and I get a lot better results. All right, so I've got that 45 degree line going right across that seam. And then I've got a little bit of fabric hanging past three and a half and on the bottom and on the side. I can scooch it up a little bit, but remember you're scooching it along that diagonal always if you need to. And then you also wanna have a little bit of fabric on the sides. So I've got my pinky just off to the side of the ruler there. That helps keep everything nice and stabilized. And with a sharp blade, you wanna give this a trim. If the blade is too dull, then it can actually push this fabric out of alignment and then you don't have fabric going straight to the corner anymore. All right, so I'm gonna give this a 180 degree flip so the edges I cut are now on the bottom, or the side and the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and line up the three and a half inch mark again, going straight down that center. And this time three and a half is even exactly with that side edge and the bottom edge. I'm gonna go ahead and put my pinky there and cut. 
Now, this may not look like much to trim off. And you may be thinking, I can skip that. But let me show you the difference. Here's one that has been uncut, and it is a difference in size. It is about an eighth of an inch larger, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it is when you are adding it into an entire quilt, and it definitely is when you are gonna be putting it next to squares that have been cut exactly to the size we're trimming these two. So you're just gonna have a lot easier time getting your blocks to sew together correctly, and they're gonna lay a lot flatter, and you won't have that extra bulk that those little dog ears have because we'll have trimmed those off. So take the time, it's absolutely worth it. And again, if this was too fast for you on how to do the half square triangles, go check out our triangle masterclass. We've got an entire lesson on half square triangles so you can be a pro and never lose a point again. All right, I'm gonna trim down the rest of these and then we're ready to sew this block together. So now you can really see how by choosing carefully where we're putting the different value colors, this really just creates a look of a flower. So we do have some peppers in here. We do have some cans in here. There's some onions, some gardening tools, but you know what? What you see is the color because you see the stem and the leaves of the flower, and then you see the petals of the flower and it looks really cool and especially in the setting where everything's going to be kind of mishmashed together and just going in different ways the way flowers naturally do as they're following the sun it's going to be a lot of fun so i'm excited right now all we have to do is we're going to sew our rows together and then we're going to join our rows and this block is done and we are ready to get the quilt together and move on to the next project so far we've sewn with that scant quarter inch seam we want to move it back to a regular quarter inch seam at this point Point. That way everything turns out the correct size for our block. Now what I like to do is sew all of these columns together and all of those columns together and then I'll join it to have an entire row and then once that's all done I press because that way I find it really efficient especially when I'm sewing a lot of blocks together like for a whole quilt then I'm able to do it much more quickly and efficiently. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together. If you want a pin, you can. What I do is these should be the exact same size because we've trimmed everything very carefully, is line up those corners and just feed it through. And then I'll just put my finger down here to hold my corners together. And when I can't hold it anymore, I just put my finger to the side so that I can guide that quarter inch stitch all the way down. All right, I've got no points to match anywhere at this point, so I can just keep flipping things right sides together and sewing down. Just make sure you're sewing the right sides together, otherwise you are gonna have petals or uh, stems going in the wrong place. Now's a really good time to do a quality check. Make sure you're comparing what this looks like to what it should look like on your pattern. Make sure everything is going the right direction with your petals and your leaves. We're good to go here, so I'm gonna go ahead and press everything open. So I really love pressing open because I find that I get much better joins and much flatter blocks when I do it that way. And I have zero problems quilting. Like I'm able to get right into the seam. I don't have any problems with longevity or my quilt's wearing out. So if you have a problem with it, give it a try. You're gonna love it. Your quilt's gonna turn out great. Um, but uh, you do wanna be careful at this point when you're pressing because you wanna make sure that you are lifting and pressing because you don't wanna accidentally press some of these other seams going the wrong way. 
All right, once I've got a whole row together at this point, I'd like to take my spray mister, give it a little spritz, and that way it lays super nice and flat. So I don't ever like to put water in my iron because every iron I've ever put water into eventually spits and gets your fabric gross. So instead of using steam, what I do is I use one of these spray misters and it turns water into a fine aerosol mist so you don't get water droplets. And then I'm able to press and get this super, super flat. And I like to do this when they're in rows. And then also once they're finally in a block, I'll give everything a final spritz that way. But this just looks so good. We are so ready to get this together. All right, I'm gonna keep on pressing these and then we're gonna pin and join this block. All right, it's time to pin this block together. And if you followed along with our triangle masterclass, we have an entire video on how to put it together so you don't lose any points and a separate one on our two pinning method. We're gonna use both of those techniques in this block. So for this first one, you can see that we don't actually have points that join anywhere here. So that's good. But we do have a point here and a point here that we don't wanna lose. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these right sides together and keeping this side up, that's a side I'm gonna keep up when I sew because I'm gonna stitch just one needle width to the seam side of where that tiny little triangle is. And that way I'm gonna be able to make sure I don't lose that point. So when I'm pinning, all I need to do is make sure that those seams are lined up right on top of each other. And I've got equal amounts going on either side. Then I always pin in the right side of the seam allowance where I'm going to be sewing. That way, it's pinned right where that needle is gonna be. And when I turn it this way and I'm able to stitch, I can stitch just one needle width to the right of where this tiny little triangle is in that seam. And that'll make sure I don't lose any of those points. I can do the same thing down here. Now, I always wanna pin where I'm gonna be sewing because if I were to pin like say way down here, that's not gonna help me out because that pin, that, uh, triangle up here can move quite a bit and then your seams might not be in alignment anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and get that lined up. Pin and here as well. And again, the reason why, if you haven't seen our triangle mask class, you should watch it. It's totally free. Um, but it, uh, the reason why I sew in that pin in that left side is when we're stitching, we can stop with our needle down in the right side of the seam allowance pull the pin because that needle is gonna kind of act like a pin and hold everything together and we're much less likely to lose joints that way. All right, let's get that out of the way. This one, we do have a triangle that's gonna be coming together right here and right here. Those are gonna be coming together and so we wanna use our two pinning method for that section. I'm gonna take a look at this though. Let's see, we have two triangles here and two triangles here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this one on top and just, this is the only one that I won't actually be able to see. So I think we'll be okay because I'll be able to make sure that I'm just one needle width to the right of these two triangles. We're gonna pin to make sure those two are on top of each other. And then that one, we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope that it's a quarter inch away from that seam. All right, so let's put that right sides together. Now we're gonna do the two pinning method. All right, so I'm putting my pin right in where that tip of that triangle is, that's in that little seam allowance. And then from the right side on this one, I'm gonna put it right in above that. This is my two pinning method, because sometimes despite our best efforts, these aren't exactly a quarter inch away from the edge. So by doing this, I can pinch it with my thumb and forefinger to keep that going straight up and down. That makes sure that the, uh, the points are right on top of each other. Then I can take a second pin and pin in from the side in that right side of the seam allowance and we're good to go. And just an FYI, if this fabric is looking very neon green, it is not neon green in real life. We have a brand new camera that we're using in our overhead camera. Um, it's gonna shoot in a higher resolution, so I think it's gonna be better for you guys. Uh, but I literally got it last night, uh, it finally arrived, so I didn't get a chance to like do the thorough testing I would like with it. So if the color is a little off, uh, it's not neon green in real life. All the other colors look normal to me in the uh, in the viewer but that one for some reason doesn't it doesn't like it as much all right so here 
here's that seam we joined. I'm going nice and slow, so I'm just to the right of where that tiny triangle was in that seam allowance. That way I shouldn't lose either of those points. The rest of the time I just sew until my needle's down in the first half of that seam allowance, that, that right side. Then I can remove the pen and keep on going. Got another triangle, aiming for just to the right of that. And then I usually don't pin my ends. I usually just line them up and hold them in place with my pointer finger. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and press these open now. And again, I'm being really careful to lift and press. I'll open those up with my fingers first, especially paying attention to those seams and just making sure that that is really flat without hitting any of these other seams because it's quite a bit at this point. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the spray mister, but I'm really happy with these points. Those came together perfectly. That line of fabric is just going straight across. It looks like we've got that nice little stem coming into that. And then my points ended up really nice here as well. So it takes a little bit of extra time to pin that way, but the results are so beautiful. Oh, look at those joins, they're so good. I love it when they come together like that. All right, now it's time to join our top half to our bottom half. We don't have any triangle points that need to be met, but we do have two points. And since it's going to a nice straight seam, we don't have to do that two pinning method, but I do wanna make sure that that's on top again. That way I can just sew to just the seam side to the right of where those points are, and we'll have perfect joints all throughout the block. All right, it's almost time for that big reveal. I'm so excited to see this all together. Here I have the quilt mostly done by the time I fill this tutorial. In this case, this is the first time I'm seeing the block all together because my stamp other ones are in pieces. Oh, that looks so good. I'm so excited. It's turned out exactly how I envisioned it with the this looking like leaves and then this looking like the petals of a flower. Oh man, I'm excited. Let's give that a good spread. So actually let's just get the whole block and get that just really nice and flat. I just love how this block turned out. I think it's so beautiful. I normally don't get so specific with color, but I think it, it warranted it for this one. What I try to do for our Stash with Stephanie subscribers is the hardest part that I think people have is figuring out what to do with the collection that they love. So what I do is I take a look at this and I say, fabric, what would you like to be when you grow up? And I think on it for a little bit and eventually something like this will always come to me. And so we can take something like this and I do the hard work of saying, you know what, let's take these deeper prints and let's use those for our petals and let's take the more medium ones that are orange and let's use that for the inside of the flower and let's do the same with our flower stem let's use our deeper prints for our petals or our leaves and then we'll use the lighter prints for the inside and the stem and we do the math for you we create the pattern we could create the video tutorial and we really take you how to show you how to go from your fat quarter bundle to the completed pattern and give you guys a project to go with it because I know that that's challenging and I really love I just love 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 how this turned out and that's a fun challenge for me every single month to take a stack of fabric and create something totally new with it that really highlights the fabric and lets it live its best life that's that's my goal and that's all and sometimes it works out better than others but I think this month it looks really really fun Again, the collection this month is Grow by Pippa Shaw. We did get extra fabric. So what happens if you're a Stashing with Stephanie member, you get 10 fat quarters for $29.99 a month shipped to you each month. If you just are joining now because you saw this video, you wanna get a full kit of this because this has already been shipped, you're not gonna get this. You'll get a different collection and that'll ship around the 20th of next month, so October is will be when your first bundle comes. But you, once you're a member, you get 25% off additional fabric, and then you get the free pattern, plus all of our other free patterns, and discounts on my books that use Fat Quarter patterns, which we have a new one coming out soon. And the last one, Fat Quarter Workshop, is a bestseller on Amazon, so it's exciting. And 
they also get first dibs on fabric. So what we do is we send you 10 fat quarters. Usually we take about 15 that we use to do the quilt. That way you can get a nice lap to twin size quilt. And so we'll give you the 15 you didn't get plus your background and binding enough to do that. And you will have all of that in what's called a finishing kit. And so members get first dibs on that plus buying extra yardage. And the last two, three months, we have been totally sold out almost by the time we let it get to our regular people who are subscribed to our YouTube channel and our email list. This month, we got a lot extra because you guys have been liking it so much. So we'll see how that goes. We may be reducing again in the future depending on how much we have left. But if you really like it and you want to support us and you love this pattern, go get it. We'll be able to get a lot more um, out to you guys this month. And I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Check out Stash from Stephanie. It's a great deal. I got a, uh, something came up in my feed because you know obviously they're going to advertise you based on what you like. And so they think I like subscription fabric. Um, and they were only six fat quarters and a pattern to go with their bundle and it was the same price as ours for $29.99 plus shipping and we give you 10 fat quarters of a brand new fabric collection that just came out plus you get 25% off any additional fabric from that collection and you not only get that month's free pattern but you also get access to all of our previous patterns that we've designed for the club and we give you discounts on my books that use fat quarters because we see a lot of people in our Facebook group you know, maybe this isn't what they want to do. Maybe they don't want to do this pattern, but they really like the fabric and they can pick from dozens of other patterns and, and make it their own and do whatever they want. And they can get the additional fabric they need to make it happen and they can get that all the discount. So it's a really great way to quilt on a budget and really turn out some really fun things and get some great ideas. So enough being on the soapbox. I think it's a great deal. It's better than the other deals we see out there. We hear that from our members all the time that it's the best deal in terms of fabric. You do need to know how to download a PDF pattern. Um, all of the patterns that you have access to are PDF only, so you do need to know how to do that. But otherwise, you have access to a lot of great value right away when you join with those patterns. And then on the 20th of next month, we will ship you your first bundle. So check that all out over at shop.quiltedexanonymous.com. All right, we'll check that out. The pattern is called Grow, or no, the fabric is called Grow. The pattern is called Flower Patch, and it's super fun. And next up, we're gonna have a video on how I'm gonna quilt this. And just so you guys know how quickly we roll with these things, it is Thursday, and this is the first block that I have all together. I've got about 29 more that are almost together. I've got them in sewn into rows at the moment. And this will be quilted the video edited, the pattern out, photographs taken, video up for our subscribers by Sunday. So I got a couple of days to make that happen, but we always make it work. And then all the rest of you guys will get to see it and get whatever's left for the fabric on Monday. So we move fast around here. It's a lot of fun. It's, they say, if you like what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And I would say it is definitely work, but it is fun work. So. Thank you to all of you for making that possible for me and my team that we get to enjoy what we do playing with fabric every day. So with that, I'll let you go. And until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.